My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Tip. Yeah, I'm having a I'm having a bits and pieces day. All sorts of stuff is getting done today. I'm just trying to like tidy up and finish up some odds and sods so it's all ready for when Steve comes back because I really want to just pull this thing apart now. Um the exhaust has all been welded up, got a big old bottle of argon. <laughs> so that's all been taped up and I've dressed it all down. Really does look nice. I'm quite pleased. There's still a little bit of dressing up and stuff to do, but it's basically there. Um, I dress it up with this thing, with the angry grinder. <laughs> That's what I've come to call it. This thing is bloody lethal. Um, if anybody's got one of these though, I will give you a tip. Um, that I mean, they're brilliant for doing anything that's round like a tube or anything else like that, but it just eats belts for bre breakfast and like two for dinner. It really, really does. Look, can you see this? It's all frayed and it's gone out of shape with the heat because it does generate quite a lot of heat. Um, but yeah, so it comes with these aluminium oxide um, belts. Aluminium J113, JB5, whatever that is. Um, which is just like a normal sanding belt, but they are quite weak and flimsy and very quickly they start getting all baggy around the edges and then they just look like they want to jump off and land in your face. So I've started using these things, these zirconia belts. Um, PZ533, whatever that is. Deofoss. I don't know. Zirconia, they're the blue ones basically. And what I will say is they are a little bit more expensive, not quite double the price, but the carcass on these is way stronger. If you look at how that one is frayed and everything else, um, and then compare it to this one, this one is still solid. Uh, the reason why I took this belt off is just because I've gone through all the grit on it. It's now pretty much smooth. Thing is, I would have gone through five of them compared to the one of them. It only took one belt to do all the dressing up. So I'm dead impressed with these. Um, you know, not quite double the price, but lasts five times as long. And there is still grit on it. It's just like, it's now like a real fine one. So when you're using it on the angry grinder, um, you put a real shine on stuff rather than like a brush finish where it's chewing into it. But well worth considering if you've got one. I'm getting some of them for the finger sander as well. Right, what else should we do? Oh yeah. Hmm. That's the delivery. Let me show you. Look at this. This isn't for Jixit. This is for our boat. Because I really want to get him back on the boat. Because all the lovely weather and stuff is here. But this is a new, uh, new headers and stuff. Oh, got another sticker, that'll be going up. But yeah, this apparently is um, what they use in the, like the Bandit Cup and whatnot. It's a race exhaust header system. You can get the whole thing. But I've already got like a link pipe and an end can. So that's just gonna go on here. And ultimately I'll just reuse this and make me anything anyway. 
It is really nicely made though. The ticking on it is lovely. I wish I could tick like that. <laughs> um, but this was like way cheaper than the Delca Vic. And you get like all the gaskets and everything else. Um, that obviously goes into the, the link pipe. But you know, it's all basically there, which is awesome. Um, so at some point, this is going to be going up on our boat. And I can start looking to get him back in the road. We've got all the springs, got the exhaust clip. You even get a tube of this um, exhaust assembly paste, which is good because I'm going to need some of that over there. <laughs> but yeah, so this is all going to be going on there at some point. Um, and I can look to do the front end swap and get him back on the road, which I am itching to do. Itching. Oh, hello. What's that? Oh, right. Okay. I wonder if that fits the link pipe. You just know this is going to pop out someplace else, don't you? No, no, it's too big. And that one's too big. But, stick those together. A lot of gold in there. That'll go around and clamp on there. And you'll go on the end. Sweet! Cool, we can get that done there at some point. Ideal. That one was racing in the paddock, so this would have been about, oh God. When was it? About 97, 96, something like that. There was a team called Black Widow Racing, and I don't know if it's the same people, it probably is. Um, I doubt it very much. What was his name? Um, what was his name? Hitter. That was it. Something or other Hitter, I'm sure it was. But anyway, he was blinding in the power bike. He had an R1. He was just beating everybody. And he was doing bloody well in the Super Sport 600s as well on an SRAD Suzuki. And it was all going fine, and he was going home with trophies every weekend and everything else. Uh, until somebody put in a protest and went, I think he's got a 750 engine in his 600 and that's why he's winning everything. <laughs> and we never saw him again. He just folded up tents and disappeared, which is a shame actually, because had he had gone out for the next race, we'd had a chat all up and down the paddock. So on his first flying lap, there would about, I don't know, 10 or 15 fellas all hanging a pit board out with his name and his number on, and plus 150. <laughs> I'm sure it's not then though. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Anyways, um, what we've got to do? Oh, we've got to do the brackets. Right. So, here. My small bit of stainless. I'm thinking we might be able to reuse this bit. Um, or that bit, one or the other. I just need to get it out, don't I? Come on. Cut all the way through. Oh, right, you're getting chopped up. Right, I'm messing about with um, brackets. So what we're doing is this frame line here, I want the bracket to follow that line so E is going to go on there and follow the, the, um, the line of the frame. But I don't just want to have a, a, a bent piece of stainless like that because it's not the strongest thing, not until you box it in. So I've been playing around with this and what we're going to do is that is going to get welded onto there, something like that. Um, obviously I'll trim all the back off and blah, blah, blah. Trim it off here as well leave a bit extra and that way I can shape it around the curvature of the exhaust um, so I get to weld it on two sides here and here um, it will just make it a lot more rigid it ain't gonna go anywhere and there's a bit more weld holding it onto the the, uh, the exhaust tube so that's what I'm gonna do I think um, if I chop that across there first I think uh, I just need to decide where to chop it and then I'll weld it all together. That'll be all right. 
Right, just fussing and fiddling with this a little bit. But I think that is going to do it. So basically I've just uh, welded on a piece, dressed it all up. So it's, it's not just a, f a f you know flat bit of metal or anything, it's, it's actually got an angle to it, it's got some strength in it. And I reckon if that gets welded about like that, I reckon we're in. I reckon that'll work a treat. It's quite minimal. It does follow this uh, frame rail. So, you, you know, it's all in keeping. And it's only, at the end of the day, it's only like, what, 40, 50 mil long? It's not a biggie, but that'll do. That'll do a treat. Right, let's get that welded on. Bit of an odds and sods day so far. <laughs> um, the all color mounts, um, yeah, the, the, the lower brackets and stuff on either side, they're just tacked in place at the minute. I've got spaces in there to sort of simulate the, the rubber gaskets, the, you know, the rubber isolators and stuff that's going in there. The exhaust is all buttoned up. I've still got the uh, spring hooks, um, but we'll sort that out at some point. Um, the little s s center mount here, that worked out all right. It's just like a 90 degree, you know, boxed in so it's strong, it ain't going anywhere, it's all ticked on. Uh, all the pipe is dressed up. Um, it's, there's still a little bit of fussing and faffing to do, but it's all basically there. And if you look around the back, it is nice and snug. <laughs> It's got about 15 mil clearance to the swing arm. Um, swing arm's only ever gonna go up, so that gap is only ever gonna, you know, increase. But it's about as tight in as I dare get it. Um, but it does look quite nice. Um, also, hello. <laughs> I've done the bushes on this side uh, for the gear shift. So that's all in place. Need to sort out the the side stand at some point as well, because I am bet I'm gonna need to lengthen that. But we'll get it off the bench, we'll have a look, see, and see what's needed there. So, what's next? Oh, where have they gone? Where have they gone? They're here somewhere. Um, steve I've got some rose joints. You've got two of them, a left and a right. And for the life of me, I don't know what I've done with them. They're in there somewhere. <laughs> I just don't know where. Where, to, where would I put... See, I'll put stuff somewhere safe, and then I'll never find it again. Well, you know, maybe a couple of months later when I'm having a clear out. Where's it gone? I'll find them, it'll be all right. But anyway, I need to make another one of these. So the shaft for the, for the gear shift, basically links the, um, links the pedal to the gearbox. We've moved the foot pegs back and down a bit because it's Steve-O and his dodgy gammy knee. So this thing will be long enough, I need to make another one. I've already got the alley, that's over there. So that's gonna be easy enough, I'll just turn it up on Chuck Norris. Um, I ain't gonna be able to finish it completely because I'm gonna wanna put some spanner flats on it, which I could really do with a mill in the corner what is working so I can do that little bit. I can make all the rest of it though, that'd be easy. Um, I've got all the 
taps and dies for my left-handed thread. So that's easy enough. Only other stuff that we're waiting on is um, Steve-O has ordered a fuel filler cap. He's gone for one of them Monza style jobbies. A bit like what, is it Monza? I don't know, there is a name for them. A bit like what Andy Girding has got on the basket case. So that's stainless steel. And then he wants me to turn up an alley surround that goes in this hole with an O-ring in it to stop weather and everything else getting into it. And the stainless steel fuel filler cap is a welding jobby and that's a steel tank. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do this one yet. <laughs> Be all right, be all right, figure it out. Um, the only other thing is he's got a speedo coming as well. It should be here any time. Um, but basically, I'm just going to set that into the um, into the headlamp housing. I've got until it gets here. I don't know how far it's going to sink in or anything else. But I need all the bike together because that obviously needs to be in his his line of vision and stuff. You know, I can't just be sticking it anywhere. It's got to go in the right place. Uh, and I don't even know how big it is. It ain't gonna be a big one. I hope it's not gonna be a big one. Because that would look stupid. Now anyway, as soon as that lot gets here, get that done, and a side stand. Actually, what I might do is get this off the bench, stick it over there, and see if that side stand's any good. Because I'm willing to bet I'm gonna have to either lengthen it or shorten it or do something with it, because all the bike's changed. I do like that though. That comes out very nice. Right, side stand. So I bet it's going to be too short. This is going to fall over. <laughs> Going down. Come on. Tighten my hand as well as well. <laughs> Oh, we got lucky. Oh, we got lucky. That'll do. I don't know, it could do it coming up a little bit, couldn't it? See, it does feel quite good sitting on it. It does. It's nice and simple up here as well. There's no clutter or anything. Oh, I like it. Be quite good actually. We've we'll got the speedo set in there. It's right in your eye line. So I'm hoping, it's a bit old here. I really want to cover that up. But I'm hoping it's going to be about yay big. If it is, then we're in, we're sorted. That's an easy one. <laughs> I really should have done everything up, but. <laughs> right, I think that's it. Uh, I do think that's it, actually. Um, I did have some packers underneath the side stand because it was all a bit like this. <laughs> Steve on a Saturday night, until, well, about a year and a half ago. Um, it was a bit heavy on its stand, so I put some packers underneath there. I think I need to extend the stand by about 25, 30 mil, something like that. 
which actually ain't a bad thing because as well as getting it up a little bit it's also going to move the pad away from the foot peg when the side stands in the up position because it's all quite a little bit snug at the minute so an extra little bit of daylight there is not going to hurt um, but that's like a solid piece of steel um, I've got steel to do it with I ain't got a mill at the minute this will set up so I'm probably just going to leave that until the big mill is set up in the corner and I can do that any any time that's, that's fine um, the headlamp, I've marked up where the speedo needs to go because there's a hole in the in the back of the headlamp that obviously we want to cover up and that's kind of the lowest point at which the speedo wants to sit. So as long as it's central to that, and I've got the angle right because I measured that, then that can be done off the bike at any point as well. So that's all fine. Um, the mounting at the top of the rear shock well, that's just going to be a machined piece of alley. Um, can't do it yet because um, because of lockdown. Matt's not been able to come out and put the reverse switch on the lathe, so I can't single cut the um, the thread anyway. So that's going to have to wait until the mill's up and kicking. But again, I don't need the bike altogether for that. Um, and the fuel filler cap. I was thinking about this. If it's a stainless filler cap, jobby. And he just wants a surround to it. We just do this surround out of stainless. Because I can weld one to the other, drill some mounting holes in it, and just plonk that in. That would be fine. Again, that can all happen off the bike. And I'm scratching my noggin, and I can't think of anything else that needs to happen before we pull it apart. Nothing. I really can't think of anything. He wants a couple of caps doing, but... That's just a bit of time on Chuck Norris, you know, just to cover up the holes where the swing arm pivot goes and stuff like that. But that's just some quality time on Chuck Norris. And again, that can all happen after the event. So I think we're a teardown. Are we a teardown? I think we are. I really do think we are. I can't think of anything else yet. I'm going to give Steve a call and see if he can think of anything. But if he can't, we're at the point of pulling this thing apart. Which is good. Because 29th of March, we can then travel. Which means I can go and sort out the mill, get it onto a pallet and get it ready for collection by a firm. Which means all that corner needs to go and sort out. Some of the bits, actually pretty much one shelf in that corner, is all bits to go on Asbo. Because I've got... The, the new headers to go on. I've got a complete front end, pretty much. I mean, you know, a couple of bearings and stuff. I need to get some new tires and a battery because the one in that's knackered now. Um, but all that could go back together again. And that means I can go out hooning and lean on it a bit and get it all set right and everything else. Because then we can put this one back together again and me and Steve-O can go out hooning together. Because we'll both have a bike. I think that's it. I think we're there. So, I'm not sure what you're going to be seeing in the next one. Because there's three big things I've got on the go. Well, actually four big things. I've got to sort all that corner out. Jixit needs to come apart. Asbo needs a front head swap. And I've got a new mill to sort out. So it's going to be one of those things. But hopefully it'll keep you entertained, whatever it is. But that's where I'm leaving it. Oh, oh yeah. I did have my jab. Uh, I was booked in on the 21st, had it and everything else. And there's quite a few people saying, oh yeah, I'm booked in to have it on such and such a day and blah, blah, blah. So I thought I'd mention this. But it was dead good. He's like in and out in 10 minutes. Doddle. Um, everything was fine. Went to bed about four hours later. And then about two hours later, I got full on man flu. <laughs> I had all the symptoms, just no snot. <laughs> so I had like, every, like you know when you get flu, it's like everything aches. Had that, had a headache, had, um, couldn't get to sleep. One minute I was freezing cold, next minute I was sweating my, I was sweating a lot. Because <laughs> I was really hot. And that's it, it was weird. Um, no, that's very long. But it was definitely weird. Um, and there's some folks that's had the jab and it's like, oh, doddle, nothing to it. And there's other people that say, oh, it's poorly for four days. So, you know, if you're having your jab, 
You could land anywhere in the middle of that one. <laughs> I'm glad that I've had it though. Definitely, I can't wait for the next one in June. Even if I do stop sweating and having man flu and everything else again. Well worth it in my opinion. But anyway, I want to give Steve a call. Thank you ever so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you again on the next one. Layers! <laughs>